Hey folks, Quilletine here, and welcome to another episode of Let's Play Stellaris. This is still the pre-release build, and we're still currently in the world's dumbest war. These cruds over here, who are our Federation leader, declared war on these people over here, and have basically done nothing at all. Uh, meanwhile, my vassal here is mostly suffering the brunt of their attack. We lost a starbase at Shanex. We lost, I think we lost another starbase here, a couple of wormhole generators. I mean, not much. The problem is this. Uh, the opponents can't really move out because their fleet is too small for them to move out and really do damage over here. They have to steer, stay near their starbase, but when near their starbase, um, we can't really attack them as is either because they are using, they're actually using, hang on a sec over here, plasma throwers which are actually pretty good, and maybe we should consider having researched this earlier. I'm not sure. The base damage of this versus the UV lasers, which both have the same cost, right? 2400 versus 2400, same base cost. The DPS of the plasma throwers is 4.1 versus the UV lasers having a 4.6. Um, this is, I'm just comparing the medium ones. The difference is the plasma throwers have 100% armor penetration versus the UV lasers only have 50%. So if your, ar your enemy is using armor, and everyone has a little bit of armor, uh, but if they're using a significant amount of armor, then the plasma throwers are a hell of a lot better. But if they have any shields, uh, or if they don't have much in the way of armor at all, the UV lasers are gonna generate a lot more damage. The power usage and cost is the same. The plasma throwers actually have slightly more range, which does make them better. But at this point, I mean, we're basically done doing the UV lasers, so we're gonna do that. It would have been interesting to consider, maybe I should have gone for the plasma throwers earlier. Next time around, the next game I play, when we get plasma throwers from whatever gives us plasma throwers, it's like one of these, um, these texts we discovered on some sort of critter out there. I will probably prioritize picking that up sooner because that's quite nice. They can still be effectively countered by shields in a sense, um, but then maybe we pair them up with disruptors. If you have a ship with a disruptor, which does not ignores shields, but double damage to shields. I think disruptors are... Okay, we didn't have them this time around, but they might come up again. Um, it doesn't ignore shields, it does double damage to shields. You burn down the shield slightly faster with your disruptors, and then you're mostly just paving the way for your plasma throwers to do the bulk of the real damage. We'll finish the lasers, that's gonna be okay. Um, yeah, other than that, our fleet is just gonna go park itself around Shanex, gonna repair. Uh, we will do a big round of upgrading, and as soon as we get the blue lasers, we'll also build a bunch more cruisers with the blue lasers complete. in there. Finish the surface construction crew. Congratulations. Oh, that's Charles E. Shanix, you are upgraded to level two. Uh, which will mean you can't do the upgrade while you're doing this. You can't upgrade my fleet while you're doing this, but you're gonna be done soon enough. Just like, well. No, that's okay, that's fine. We don't have to rush it. We have a bunch of idle stuff, which we don't want. We have some money. I think I'm still going to prioritize hooking up the mining stations here, minerals and energy, as opposed to the research ones. Just because we are still sort of skirting the edge of an energy deficit from time to time. It can vary quite quickly. There you go, get that. We have a discount going on on mining stations right now, which is quite nice to see. And our science ships basically don't have a whole heck of a lot to do. I suppose... Oh, you can't reach that. Can, did we do everything over here? No, we've got that system over there that we can reach and do, so we may as well. We do have to clear out the Howling Vortex at some point. I bet you there's a lot of science there. Ethics change! Oh, because we have been kidnapping the people on this planet over and over and over again. Um, they be they're becoming more and more xenophobic. <laughs> I can't imagine why constant abductions might cause them to become xenophobes. Some people are really sensitive about stuff like that. I don't understand it. Yeah, so it'll be three months before we can queue up the Shanex one Research here. Complete. There we go. A month and a three and a half months. Uh, but that's okay. All right. Oh, there's the disruptor tech. So disruptors, yeah, only 3.6 DPS versus the 4.6 or 4.5, somewhere like that. So basically, we get a whole other full DPS out of our UV lasers. But that double shield damage is really, really cool. Oh, level two uh, shields over here. Improved deflectors. So it's actually the level three ones that are called shields, but you know, it's all the same. Uh, we definitely want that. It's also relatively cheap. And that would really help us. If we went into battle with level two shields against those plasma throwers, it would be it would be a completely different situation. I wonder if we won't just literally wait until that happens. If they're not making a move against me, 
why not just sit around and wait until we get the next level shields? That's not a terrible idea. I will upgrade the cruiser design here. To use that. Um, and I'll build some new ones. And I suppose if I'm going to do that, I will tell you what, I will build an armorless version. Still only level 1 deflectors. I don't like that. But I don't like this. Let's replace that medium slot. Eh. Is there no way to work this out like... There's got to be a way to do it. We need like Yeah, see so you're gonna you're gonna build it with the wrong thing. We need a like a math system to come in here and balance it out for us. Minus five. God damn it, really? There's zero. Okay. Well, we'll put in a little bit of armor then just to fill it out. So it's still level one def deflectors, but it does have the level three weapons, which are going to help. And I'm not going to upgrade the fleet to this, but I will go ahead and build a couple. One and two. There we go. So there's void clouds somewhere. Oh, over here. Well, we can go and blow that up if we've got nothing better to do. We could probably also take the stuff in the Howling Vortex, but I'm not 100% sure about that. Now, I better leave my battle fleet near the front so that we can at least scare people away. We won't be able to catch them because they're hyperspace, but we can just continuously scare them away. They're not moving away from their starbase. They realize that they, they can't fight us out here. Alright, you're just in orbit and doing nothing. We don't actually have the assist research thing. So our science ships are basically just idle right now. There might have been another system... Over here we can reach. Well, that's not in territory we can enter, I think. Yeah, no. So yeah, just run to Rastlas and that's going to be fine. So the uh, construction ships are still doing good stuff. Our energy surplus is pretty good right now. We're still spending it pretty quickly. It would be nice to uh, use one to get an extra robot. So we got some rivalries ending, being formed. Ships are repaired. Well, that's something. And yeah, I'm not going to upgrade them right now. Not even bother redesigning the destroyers. And the cruisers, I don't think we're ever building another cruiser. I think that, or sorry, uh, Corvette. I think the time of the Corvette is past. Alright, well, let's go up to fastest, I suppose. We'll have to keep a really careful eye over here. I guess we've got a pop-up if we do spot an enemy ship. Complete. We do have a lot of minerals, and I don't like floating a whole bunch of minerals. Cruiser assembly yards. Do we have that here? Yes, we do. I think I would like cruiser assembly yards. You know what? Cancel this cruiser. Cruiser assembly yards. Build them faster, build them cheaper. Only the two. Can't really build more than two cruisers at a time. And even then, that's pushing it. Observatory at Norwegian Blue. How's your science output, Norwegian Blue? It's actually kind of a thing. And that you have excess food right now, so we'll actually be able to replace some food. And you don't have all the things built yet. Okay, yeah, you are going to be a sciencey place. So you will definitely get an observatory for a plus 10% boost. Sensor range not bad either, but isn't critical. This, is it also going to be a sciencey place? It doesn't have that many sciencey tiles, but I still like filling the empty tiles with that. That or energy, right? And I think, actually, wow, you've got this tile here, which is two different techs, and here's two points, and that was a three-point. Right, no, actually, you are going to be super sciencey. So we'll do that, and actually, I will pop this right now. We'll use a fair amount of money, which, again, delays a robot, but that's okay. We'll upgrade you, and in your spaceport, we will go and get the observatory and a hydroponics farm queued up. Lovely. Assuming you don't get blown up again. Uh, we found some aliens. Alright, there's all the debris in Adenir, which is the system we've been fighting in. 
Science ships are idle, which is kind of fine and what has to happen. We don't have a mandate right now. We already did that. Oh, oh, the alien uh, procurement. That's what our science ships can be doing right now. Hold on. We haven't done any of these. Don't have border access. 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 And done. Oh, well, shit. <laughs> that explains it. All right, we're still going on fastest for now. We're basically just trying to burn through our tech. Well, this might be a good time. I'm going to upgrade, update my spreadsheet over here for the, the Quill Empire. What year are we in? We're in 2252. Oh, this is perfect time. This is the same time as the end of day one of the multiplayer event. And I can compare my effective science output between the two. Well, first of all, I can tell you, so my 404 Empire Not Found at the end of day one, which is 2252, my gross science output was um, was 135. Here, our gross science output is 196. So our gross is better. How is our pop modifier? 172. So, 172, which is higher than the 404 Empire, so we have a higher population, but our effective science rate, when you take into that, account that modifier, is 72, compared to the 404 Empire's 54, which is really, really quite good. And this is a boost. Our last time we checked was in 45 in this game, and we had an effective rate of 64. So our science rate is definitely going up. Of course, we were researching more and more expensive techs, but our science rate is going up, which is a good sign. And it's actually going to go up a fair bit very soon as well, as we finish those extra science stations and the observations, which is all observation posts, which is really good. And yeah, the next level of uh, shields, which are two years away, but that will make a pretty big difference. Of course, they're probably teching up as well. So it's always something to be concerned about. And we're nowhere close to our fleet limit. We could just build a ginormous fleet and just beat the crap out of them that way. But it's expensive. So where are you located? You're up there. Do I see any energy just happen to be kicking around? There's a bit over there. What do we have here as well? Tundra World. We don't have much in the way of money, but it's actually tempting to go and just colonize that right now. Especially, who is that? Zanier Confederacy. They, okay, it's just a frontier outpost, so they're unlikely to push any further than that. But what the hell? Let's go and make it a priority. Um, we want this version of our people, which are still xenophiles, as opposed to the ones to have drifted away. And yeah, we're going to go and colonize that place. We've got the money. It's a good system. And I hadn't realized. Yeah, that's kind of annoying. But what can you do about it? Construction complete. So that's your ground construction queue. Some things are happening. People are gaining levels. We still have all three scientists. Yep. We still don't have any influence. Nope. How is our integration of these guys? We can... 81 months remaining. Takes a long time, but they're pretty big. I'd be curious to compare the si the integration time difference between these guys and the other little ones. I'm still happy for the integration. Uh, what I'll probably do, because it fits very well thematically, is I will make this whole place one sector. Right? I think that would make a lot of sense, because they used to be a thing. Hopefully they're not... I can't remember what their species are. Hopefully they're not like really 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 annoying and then this will have like no point they're collectivists repugnant no no this is gonna be fine it's gonna be totally fine how are my sectors doing do i need to feed them some minerals because i have a lot uh, oh you need right right you don't have a leader but i don't want to spend the influence right now but we'll try to get you a leader soon that's actually one of the other advantages of the sectors. Normally, you put a planet governor, you get the, the bonus to one planet. But if you give it a leader of a sector, I think he gives the bonus to every single planet within that sector, which is huge. You get a lot more bang for your buck out of a sector. Who just died? An admiral. Well, we'll definitely need an admiral back before we fight again. But again, the influence cost. I'm not going to build one now. Oh, leader enhancement. There we go. Selected lineages. So we get even better um, leaders, although the cost goes up. And, okay, that's a policy, not an edict. How interesting. All right. I think we have to take colonial centralization. Um, now, once we stop integrating subjects, we won't be soaking quite as much influence. But, hey, hold on. Does, what, does being in a federation not eat influence? Only alliances eat influences, federations don't? 
That's very interesting. I had not realized that. I had not realized that, and that actually adds significant value to being part of a federation. Again, you still get that loss of control, but wow. I wonder if the federation leader has, like, negative influence or something. So, the, the subject integration will go away, um, but we're, then we're going to integrate another one, and more influence is always good. So, there is this. We also get the planetary capital, which is another upgrade to our, um, our, our primary building on, our, on a capital, and gives you double adjacency effects, which is really good. I do want to uncover more colonization, but I think I'm going to take colonial centralization. I think the influence and the planetary capital is going to be good, and the um, production targets is fantastic. We don't have the influence for it right now, but it's a planetary one. Spend 150 influence or whatever, and for the next 10 years, produce 15% more minerals. Pretty huge. I like it. Don't need that. Don't need the biolabs right now. Cheaper edict costs. More, having more leaders is something we will want to unlock at some point, but I think this is by far the best pick for us at this time. Okay, very satisfied with that. Idle science ships, right? Because we don't have access for the critters, and I don't think we've got any grays. You are done that. We can go and bring the other cruiser up to the front. Now, for faster upgrades, you really do actually want to split your fleet. And maybe we'll do that, actually. Maybe I'll bring everyone over to here in Sudbury. And then I'll split off half the fleet and move them to Charlesy, and then we'll upgrade in two chunks. Then we upgrade a lot faster. Because we'll be complete. using two star bases, each doing half your fleet. So that is better. It means we're not going to be at the front anymore, but that's okay. Uh, idle construction ship. Right, we've got a lot of stuff to do here. Lots of minerals. I think I'll do this system first for the energy. And why are we suddenly running a deficit? A huge one. We don't have our colony ship yet. I don't know. You and you should be upgraded. And you. And you. It could be that my sectors, because I gave them energy, they might have just built a bunch of things that doesn't really help me too much. I'm going to flip you to be financial. I'm not going to redevelop anything right now. I'm just going to encourage you, so basically on empty tiles or whatever, or develop the financial ones first. We'll do that. Sudbury still has a leader. So, hold on a sec. Do I want to move you to a sector? Work? I think I do. Uh, actually, here's the thing. He also gives a lot of happiness. How's Sudbury's happiness level? Okay, not above 80%. Oh, right, and we have the minus 10% because we're pacifists currently at war, which really sucks. So I'm going to go ahead and steal the governor. Actually, we'll steal the governor from Shanex. That's going to be fine. Okay. Construction ship's busy. Battle fleets. Okay, so you guys are going to merge in Sudbury, and then we're going to split you in half. And send one of you to Charlesy. Complete. There we go. So, split in half. You go to Charlesy. And you just park yourself in orbit around the space station. And we're just waiting for improved deflectors to kick in. Eight months from now, we start a big upgrading project, and then we go and punch at these guys one more time. It'd be nice if we could just white peace, though. I'd be totally okay with that, but I'm not allowed. Relative Navy strength. That's why they're convinced they have to quit. And no kidding. Although we haven't actually been able to deal with their Navy. Because they're, they're tech. They're just a better counter. Minus 15. We've got our colony ship. Okay. Let's take care of that right away. And yeah, it's definitely a decent system. Uh, we can actually get perfect adjacency bonuses and perfect central tile utilization if we land right over here. Which is great. We will have to add you to this sector. I'm going to go ahead and do that. Now seems fine. I don't think there's any reason why we should worry. This is the, um, the Swaynor sector. So we're going to go and add... Oh, shit! You were already in there, so I just spent 25 influence for nothing. 
which I do wish they had changed. They change around. Um, I'm gonna give you this sector just because your border looks stupid, and we'll give you some extra minerals once we get that hooked up. It'll be better. God damn it! That interface really has to change to something. You make a change and then confirm the change rather than taking effect immediately. A lot of people are getting screwed by that. It was really bad at the multiplayer game where people were toggling things on and off, trying different situations, then someone had this like, like, by the way, every time you're sitting around toggling stuff, you're burning 25 influence. Construction. Because it feels like a mode screen that you then have to confirm when you hit finish, but it's not like that. So just a slight UI improvement over there that would be nice. Uh, we're gonna ignore the science stations for now because I'm still worried a little bit about the money. And we don't really need the minerals here either. Do we have any other sources of energy within my borders? Um, yes. Yes, we do. And of course, right now we're paying more because we've got our colony ship, but that will only last so long. Now, if we do run out of money, one thing it does do is stall our colonization out, which is really annoying because then we're stuck supporting a colony that isn't growing, so the money situation is really, really bad. I think it might be time to make another pass through the trade. So I don't remember. I'm going to just do all of them one at a time over here. Um, that's a little bit annoying. Okay, we'll just close you out. We would like some of your energy credits. Could you please give me 300 credits? I have many minerals to give you. There we go. I'm perfectly happy with that. And then we're going to go to the next person in the list. Oh, actually, in this case, the... Oh, I think it's when the trade window opens that it's not stacked properly. Oh, can we get some research agreements up in here? Nice. And at the same time, why don't you instant transfer me a bunch of those, and I will sweeten the pot with a bunch of minerals. Cool. Cool. And who's next? You, I've traded with a few times. We have a lot of techs I don't have, so let's do that. And instant transfer, oop, no, not minerals, credits. I mean, I'm gonna get a lot of credits as is, but what the hell, we're still running a deficit, so, and we don't really need our minerals right now, even though we're gonna do a big upgrade, which is gonna be pricey. But hey, maybe it'll let them build a bunch of ships and actually get some work done. That would be nice, wouldn't it? And confirm, okay. Everyone should accept. And yeah, now we have a lot of minerals, so we'll be able to run that deficit for a long time. Improved effectors, done. <gasps> okay. Red technologies are dangerous technologies. Sentient AI. Now, here's the thing. I still don't have, like, synths or anything like that. Right? I only have regular robots. Regular robots cannot uprise, but I don't know if this is linked to that, or if it's linked to something completely different. I mean, we have to go for it. It's a rare technology, 10% more research speed, which I believe stacks on top of our existing 5% research AI bonus. Um, right over here, administrative AI plus 5%. It might not, it might replace it, but still. This is really freaking expensive though. Holy crap, that's insanely expensive. How long would this take? 140 months. So, what, somewhere around 12 years? I... Oh, I don't... Okay, I think I have to skip it right now. It's just so expensive, and I really want solar panel networks. That's going to help a lot with our energy problems. We'll just have spaceports everywhere with solar panel networks. Um, ooh, the energy hub is a really nice building. I can't believe we haven't unlocked that yet. No, I have to prioritize this. I know it's really cool, and I, I want to intentionally take things that could lead to horrible disasters, but I mean, less than a year to get something that's gonna 100% fix all of our energy problems. Because all of our star bases will eventually effectively be sort of free for different values of you know their size and modules and whatever. Um, but still, We've got a lot of star bases. I mean, we've got at least one on all of our planets that we directly control, plus a lot of our sector planets, and each one of those will now give us three energies, so obviously that will be pretty good. Okay, let's go ahead and finish our design upgrades over here. So, our... Did you never get a cool name, Mr. Cruiser? That's really unfortunate. So, let me go and pull that up right now. Where's my subscriber list? Bum, 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 right there. And so, you are going to be named the M-Dacto. 
So we hit save. And then what I'm going to make sure to do is delete the old cruiser. So we only have one that you can upgrade to. There we go. That'll keep it simple. All right. Level three weapons. I'm still okay with that. That's going to be fine. But I'm really excited about the next level of deflectors. Now, that will eat into our energy uh, usage considerably. I'm actually going to go ahead and do that. And then we'll have to put another fusion reactor uh, for 30, which is exactly the medium slot. But we'll also be replacing a shield. If I put it in the small, does that work out? No. So I think I have to put it in a medium slot, do that. We end up with a lot of excess power, though. I think that means I can put a fusion reactor here and just put armor in the medium slot. Alright, I think that's still an upgrade over our total shield hit points. They still have shield piercing. Like, this helps nothing against this opponent, but it's still, I mean, good overall. There's probably another way to work it out. Yeah, you know what we, we're, we're going to need? We're going to need a little application, a little app on the side, you know, in a web browser that tells you, okay, how many slots of each size you've got, right? Small, medium, large, all these things. You find out what your fusion reactor is, all these breakpoints, and then you look at all your deflectors here, and it'll tell you what, how many deflectors to put in what slots. It'll be like, put in one in the large, three in the smalls, and then fill the medium and the large with um, fusion reactors, except for one extra small slot or whatever, just put in some armor because we can't really get it to work out. I'm, there's, there's an optimal way to fill in these slots, and I'm betting there's a way that results in more shields and without the armor bit here, but... Because they're all, they're all even multipliers. It's frustrating me. It's frustrating me here. There's got to be a way to do it. I mean, I guess I could just use a fusion reactor one in a couple of slots to save some money. Okay, that's, this is a lot better, because then I'm only filling a small slot with armor. As opposed to, I think uh, my previous setup resulted in a medium slot having armor and us having excess power. We're exactly zero, which is nice, and short of another way to sort of fluff things around, there's really no other way to do it. Okay, good. Happier with that design. Excellent. And the anxiety girl also needs to be updated now, finally, with the blue lasers, or the UV lasers, my bad. And the level 2 shields down here. Maybe I'll fill it all with that. And so the hard part is, like, the reactor adds stuff, but it also removes it. So I get a 45-point swing if I replace a medium slot with the fusion reactor. Uh, so something like that, and then another medium slot. There we go. Oh, shoot! I missed a shield. Oh, great. The whole math was... Oh, no. Didn't realize the difference in a small slot is 2.5. That works out perfectly. That works out beautifully. Okay, that might be the easiest way to work it out. Shield everything and then fill in the slots based on the swings. Okay, and I don't have to worry about the Corvettes because I don't build Corvettes. Okay, Battle Fleets, you upgrade. You upgrade in the Charlesy system, which is great. Do I do I want to build more ships? I mean, there's, that's going to be expensive. I'm going to throw in a couple. What the hell? Oh, you can't build destroyers. You need to go to level 3, probably. Because at the very least, we're going to want more slots for those things. You can get the orbital hydroponics farm. And then we're out of minerals. Okay! That's fine. Construction ship is done. Construction complete. All right, let's go and uh, hook up a little bit of research over here. That's going to be fine. Mining station's done. Yep. Okay. Ground stuff. Mm -hmm. Rivalries and things. Okay. All good. All right. So now we have a lot more shields. I mean, it's still only like 360 points of shields, and then after that they do ignore armor. But we also have a lot. We don't really have the armor to ignore, so we're trading off. We probably lost somewhere between 5 to 10% of damage reduction on our hull, which literally didn't do anything for us anyway, uh, in exchange for just a buffer of 3, well, depending on the destroyer versus the other things, like two to 400 uh, hit points on top is effectively what we're doing, which is good. 
That is a new Resume. set of destroyers. I'm just going to move you up to the front. Colonize. Ah! Colonial centralization. So plus one monthly influence is going to be helpful. And the new planetary capital is amazing. There's the next level. Even more static influence. Plus... Ah! This also unlocks the advanced government forms. Which... I think we sort of want to prioritize. Although I do want to be able to colonize more stuff. Especially if I'm not planning on expanding my borders. And I'm not. And actually I've sort of run out of expansion options for a little bit, haven't I? But these will come back. These will come back. I, I think I'm going to be happy with the Galactic Administration. Make our current planets even better than they are. And then build some more of them. We actually, we have some places we can expand to right now. It's okay. As long as it's uh, above 40%, I think we don't get the unhappiness. Or maybe it was 50%. Still fuzzy on the numbers. I think they've changed a couple times as part of it. Krillian League. Okay, that's not us, so that's okay. Spaceport on Shinax finished its queue. More spaceports done. Right, some of those are... Go to level 2, so you got some more slots. Shinax, you're good for now, just stay put. Yeah, but we'll get the solar panel modules and it'll be great. Okay. How's these repair, or these upgrades coming along? 60%, 40%? Not too shabby. And our destroyers didn't have... Actually, really, un other than like the two extra cruisers we built, nothing had the UV lasers, and now they'll have the higher level shields as well. And the end result... Oh, an election. Um, can we scroll down this list? Yeah, there's more stuff. People point out you can scroll down this list and see a lot more things. Which might be good, but mostly I don't want to spend influence supporting people unless we've got something very specific in mind. I'm not really going to be doing that. You can go up to the front as well. 85, 65. Still on fastest speed here. Lots of energy. I, pr I, I mean, I overtraded for the energy credits, but that's actually going to be perfectly fine. Oh, you know what we could do with the energy credits too right now? Is again, make sure, because you know, eventually we'll get that advanced AI that everyone's got a robot. You've got a robot, which is good. You are full. So I will use my resources to pop some of these blockers off. I'm actually going to do two over here, like that. You're nowhere close to full. Ah, you can upgrade to the planetary capital. That takes a lot of influence. I, I may want to pool more influence in case, like, if one of my scientists dies, I need to make sure I've got influence to hire one, so I think I'm going to hold off on that. Oh, you're migrating to Arkish. Really? Why? I'm curious about this. Your current happiness is 70%. What does Arkish have going for it? People here are only at 68% happy. Why are you migrating to here? Inside of a sector. Is it, it might be a, um, there might be an ideology difference here. You are, you have no ethics. Wait, literally? You literally have no ethics whatsoever. It's just blank. Ethics divergence is growing here. Oh, it's a 10% boost if they're managed by a sector. Interesting. So if you're playing um, a Divine Mandate, you're going to want to build your your tombs, your ma mausoleums on planets that have um, that are in a sector. Because that'll offset that difference. If you have negative ethics divergence, then they will diverge towards your, your central tenants, your governing ethics. But if it's positive divergence, then they will move away from it slowly over time. Or there's a chance that they will. Solar panel network done. That's going to be really good for us. Planet sensor range is interesting, but... And while the plasma thrower still has potential, uh, the cold fusion power is a no-brainer. We need, we always need better and better and better ship power generators, which is good. So, it's a no-brainer. You can't go wrong by picking that. The only question is maybe you don't want to prioritize something first, but since we can't go wrong, we will do that. Uh, upgrades are still coming along. Construction ships are idle. Yeah, okay. Go nuts. Um, go with the research. That's one research that has six. I did not real. I would have done that a lot sooner. That's right. Yeah, that we should have done that sooner. Whoops. My bad, guys. Do that. We'll want a warp station up here, too. But we don't have to rush that. Situation log updated. New ruler mandate. Ships upgraded. What's your mandate? I hope it's actually tech. Now they realize it. And it is. 
Beautiful. Ship upgrades done on the first battle group, so please move up to the front over here. Second battle group, getting there very quickly. And yeah, we still need to hire an admiral as well. This might be a good time to do it so that I don't forget. So let's recruit. What do we have? We have the lifespan, which might be handy. Oh, there we go, aggressive. What's this, sensor range? No, we want 20% fire rate. Thank you kindly, get up to the front. Okay, we'll put in a cut here. Next episode, we go and bring the rain over here as aggressively as possible. We will have um, almost 3,500 battle strength. And more importantly, cannot be countered as hard by their bullshits. So again, I'm not really paying attention to their defenses. All the lasers don't really go wrong. We'd have higher DPS if we were going with something that didn't have any counters. Like that's one of the nice things about just like the auto cannons or whatever. They don't have any, they don't counter anything. They're just decent DPS. And sometimes that's all you look for. Uh, Charles Lee. Oh, you're done. Excellent. Move up to the front. Beautiful. Yeah, they're literally exactly the same. Yeah, three and four and exactly the same strength. Well, that worked out nicely. Because sometimes they divide where you got like one extra cruiser here and a couple extra destroyers there. But it just divided exactly in half. All right, we're putting in a cut. We'll group up the fleet in a Kondraka and we'll go and attack these guys just to try to put an end to the war. What I'm also should do once I clear out the system and I grab both my science ships, I'm going to put them on passive and move them. Yes, no. All right, move them individually um, to the front here because I'm going to have them scan all this debris once this uh, this sector is safe. I'm putting them on passive so they don't instantly warp out as soon as like a single Corvette walks through the system because um, hopefully they will be protected by my main battle group. We'll see how it goes. They could probably stand an upgrade too, especially if I'm going to start using them in this sort of role. You know, better engines, better sensors, and um, I'd probably just go... Oh, they need more power, so level two there. And then rather than put another generator on and shields, I'd probably just go and give them some armor over there and call that good enough for our science design, right? Give them a little upgrade. Do we need to do the same thing with our construction ships? Eh, you know what? The extra speed would be good. And I suppose if they had the sensors, then we could keep track of more space. That would be nice. And I think I'll do the same thing. I'll give them the fusion reactor and just a little bit passive armor. I mean, right now that we'd be fighting people that ignore, ignore armor, so that wouldn't help. But a lot of things don't ignore armor. So that's something that can be done. Uh, do I want to take the time to upgrade these guys? I guess that's probably okay. You know what? Let me upgrade the science ships too, before we send them to the front, so they can deal with that. I'll wait for the other construction ship. Okay, but now we're putting in a cut. Thanks for watching. See you next time.